What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got more Ultimate Universe with issue four of Jonathan Hickman's Ultimate Spider-Man. And this series has been really cool, y'all, because we get to see a new version of Peter Parker's backstory. One where he doesn't become Spider-Man until into his 30s. And if you guys need to get caught up with this series, then I place a card at the top of the screen for you right now and the link at the end of the video. But it was in the last issue where we finally got the official Spider-Man suit and he finally took down his first major villain in Bullseye with the help of the Green Goblin, believe it or not. But in this universe, the Goblin is revealed to be Harry Osborn, who uses his technology to determine that Peter Parker is indeed Spider-Man. But then the two decide to go out for a drink after learning of each other's identities. So if you guys are ready to find out where this new budding Peter and Harry bromance can lead, then you guys know what time it is. Let's get it. So this story picks up in the month of April. And y'all remember, it's only a couple more months till Tony Stark said that he returned. So keep that in mind. But Peter Parker and his wife MJ are stepping out tonight. And Peter looks like he's about to go hit the dance floor like John Travolta and go cut a rug. <laughs> While MJ looks like she's about to walk into a business meeting. But being full-time workers and parents of two, they're just about thrilled at an opportunity to get out and dress up a little bit. Then they go on to compliment one another until Harry Osborne walks up apologizing for being late. Then he and Peter exchange pleasantries. And Peter tells him that they're actually giving him a hard time coming into this swanky spot until he gave them Harry's name, to which Harry apologizes right back since the crowd here can be a bit insufferable, he tells Peter. But then they order up some drinks while Peter introduces MJ to Harry. Then Harry plays the perfect wingman and he tells MJ that all Peter talks about is her. Then he congratulates MJ on her new business. He's got a lot of respect for people that bet on themselves which gets a big rise out of MJ because she's really excited about this new endeavor for her. Then she tells Peter that she can see why he likes Harry. Then they ask Harry about his wife because they thought that she was coming. But Harry tells him that she was running late because she had a business thing uptown. But just as he tries to finish explaining it, she arrives and he introduces Peter and MJ to his wife, Gwen Stacy. How about that, guys? And then Gwen walks up and they all once again exchange introductions. Then after they finish their meal, MJ talks about how much she loved that and they really hadn't been out on a date since before they had kids. And MJ asks Harry and Gwen if they have any kids, but Gwen tells her that they don't. They are considering it though. But Harry adds in that they're a bit worried about the world that they be bringing kids into. Then MJ asks how long they've been married, to which Gwen answers that they've been married for just over eight years. But Harry tells MJ that they really want to know about her. They know what Peter is up to, but he wants to hear about how her business is going, which perks Gwen's ears up. She didn't know about MJ's business. Then Peter starts to brag about her, tells them that she started her own PR firm and that she's a marketing genius. Then MJ goes on to tell them how she got into PR. She used to model a little bit, and that was fine, but while she was doing that, she had started handling her own branding, and people had liked what she did, so words started getting around. Then she got picked up by this big agency, and she had worked there for a little while, and after that, she had got poached by another firm for an executive suite about five years ago. But that other firm was super gross, she says, and she couldn't continue to go for it, so she left. Then Harry asks who she currently has for clients, and she tells him that, She's on a retainer at Damage Control, but other than that, just a bunch of one-offs. Except she did just start working with Peter's uncle, Ben Parker, and J. Jonah Jameson. They're starting their own news outfit. And we just settled on a name. Then we switch over to Uncle Ben and J. Jonah as they're having a couple of beers while Ben's watching Peter's kids. And right now, J. Jonah tells Ben that he doesn't quite get the name they went with. We're doing the news online. Not in print, which I'm still not okay with. And she still wants to call it the paper? Is it supposed to be ironic or something? Then Ben jokes that it was nice of Jonah to stop by and complain about this. But then he tells them that the word that MJ used was meta. But little Richard chimes in that it's both actually, ironic and meta. But it all sounds a bit clever to Jonah. 
and he hates clever. <laughs> he does though like that it's kind of generic in the right way. Just as long as she doesn't try to spell it P-A-P-R. I die of embarrassment, he says. <laughs> Little May, though, she speaks up and asks Uncle Ben if Jonah's going to be leaving soon. <laughs> but back at the restaurant, Harry jokes about having another news outlet. And he doesn't mean to be rude. It's just there's a closed system. Then he tells Peter, you'll see. But Gwen, on the other hand, thinks this might be a good idea, depending on how far they're willing to dig. She could think of a few reasons why a couple of crusty old guys with nothing to lose might be useful. And then she uses Peter's photos of the mask man swinging through the sky as an example and says that if you look at the coverage of it, it's sanitized. It's not that the stories are corporate. They are, of course, but they're intentionally obtuse. They all miss the point of the mask man, which is that he exists for a reason, that there must be a point to him, a purpose for someone or someone's. He's feeling a need for good or bad. Now, she likes to think that he's not a bad guy, but in a lot of ways, him being a good guy would be more upsetting to certain people, which implies that something's wrong with the world. And maybe he's what we're looking for, a cure for what ails us. Then she tells Peter that if his uncle is going to report on that, then good for him. And maybe Peter should let him use some of his photos. But Peter reminds her that he works for the Bugle. And she reminds him that with that attitude, he always will. <laughs> then Harry jokes with Gwen to take it easy on the working folk. But he adds in that she's not wrong. But then the ladies both get up and head to the restroom. Meanwhile, back at the home after Uncle Ben puts little May to bed, Richard lets him know that May definitely doesn't like Mr. Jameson. But Ben knows. And he also knows that she's not the only one either. Then he asks Richard what he thinks about him. But Richard thinks that it's pretty cool what he and Jonah are doing. And Ben just thinks that's because Richard reads a lot. But Richard thinks everybody should read a lot, which Ben agrees with. But you got to give him a reason to, which could be a little tricky, Ben tells him. But back at the restaurant, though, in the bathroom, Gwen asks MJ for a favor. Oscorp took over for Stane Stark a few months ago. And since then, they've scaled up in some unexpected ways, she says. And to be blunt... They've got too much money, and now she needs to get some of it off the books, but she's exhausted all of the normal charities, donations, and various nonprofits. and tonight's conversation has her thinking about MJ. More specifically, since she's the brand manager for the paper, maybe she could set something up between Gwen and the old men. She's kind of in the mood to launch a pirate ship, she says. So that's a huge win for Uncle Ben, y'all. They about to get that bag. <laughs> That Osborne bag. Peter might need to hurry up and start working for them now. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, back at the table, Harry started to freak Peter out because he won't stop smiling. But he tells Peter that he's smiling at him because you haven't told her yet, have you? He asks Peter. And now Peter's like, wait, you told Gwen? Yeah, Harry tells him. He told her everything. So Peter's like, wow, Harry, what are you thinking? But Harry tells him that it's because he loves his wife and they don't have any secrets between them. If anything, he's more surprised that Peter hasn't told anyone. Then Peter admits that his kid actually caught him in his costume. But he tells Harry that it is important to hide his identity. It's not that he doesn't trust MJ. That's ridiculous. But he's got to protect his family, right? But here, Harry really talks some sense into Peter. And he's like, you seriously think you can live this life and insulate the people you love from the consequences? And Peter tells him that he's not even really sure that he wants to do this, whatever this is. But Harry says he's seen him in action, and he tells Peter that he definitely does. If Harry's brave enough to do it, then Peter absolutely should be. And why is that, Peter asks. And Harry tells him that because at the end of the day, I'm just a guy in a suit. But with you, with your abilities, you're a good bit more than that. Then he tells Peter that it's all on them to save the world. Then Peter tells Harry that for the first time in his life, he's doing something that he's good at. Stopping bad people from doing bad things just feels right. But what Harry's talking about just sounds too big. So Harry tells Peter that he's not going to tell him what he has to do or how to do it. It's not his place and it's not his call, he says. You have to decide that. Nobody's forcing you to come along for the ride. But you need to understand where this is headed and what we're up against. 
these people, they're playing God and they're playing for keeps. And worse than that, they've been doing it our whole lives. It's institutional. It's systemic. It's the whole damn world. And you, you have great power, Peter. And with great power comes great responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, they finally said the line, with great power comes great responsibility. And it came from Harry Osborne of all people. How about that? But later on, as Peter and MJ walk home, they kind of recap the night and Peter asks her what she thinks about Harry and Gwen. And MJ thinks they're nice, but they're a little bit scary. And Peter agrees. But what'd you think about what they were saying, he says, about the world needing heroes. But she responds, what does she need heroes for? She's got him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the issue. So what did you guys think about the issue? I thought it was pretty bold to drop an issue without an ounce of action in it. Just all conversations. But knowing how Jonathan Hickman writes, I feel like all this was information dumps that will come back up later on in the series. Kind of like he's still world building right now. And I really feel like the action is really going to pick up when Tony Stark's six month wait is up and he arrives and we get the ultimates. But how are you guys feeling about the new Ultimate Spider-Man? Are you guys patient enough to wait on the action to pick up? Or is it too slow for you? I like the idea of the Osborns as financial backers for, G- for being in J. Jonah's company. Especially since Kingpin owns the Bugle and Harry's been on Kingpin's ass. So that might turn up at some point. You just know it will. But what else are you guys seeing with this series? And where do you guys see it heading? And as always. If you guys enjoyed this video and this channel, and you'd like to support the channel, then you can do so by stopping by the Comics Icon store and picking you up some of this dope new merchandise, including that background music you heard right here in this video, or by joining the Iconic Fan Club channel membership, and there'll be a link in the description to join, but with your membership, you'll gain access to weekly interactive live streams with your boy, where we can talk about everything that's been going down in these issues as well as ones that you'd like for me to go over in the future and preview what's to come on the next week for the channel. Plus, you guys will get loyalty badges, member shoutouts, and up to 20% off of Comics Icon's merchandise from the Comics Icon store. And now we've got new tiers to the memberships as well, starting at just 99 cents, y'all. How's that for an easy way to help support the channel? And if you're not able to do that, then you can still be a huge, huge, huge help to the future of this channel. By dropping a like, share, and subscribing to Comics Icons for more icons in the comic book world. But ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I'm out.